What's up, everybody? You are about to watch maybe the funniest episode of Long Days to Date with my good buddy, the hilarious Jeremiah Watkins. We go some wild places, and it was just gold. It was just magic. Uh, I cracked up the whole time. You're going to love it. We felt it in the room. Most importantly, my special right now is out. I hope you're watching it. You've watched it. You shared it. It's free, but it costs a share. Also, patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days for our weekly bonus episodes where we really dig into stuff and go wild here on the set. Patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days. Now enjoy this magical episode with Jeremiah Watkins. You can also go back and watch all the episodes that me and Jeremiah have done together by just Googling it. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Long Days. We have the great, the hilarious, first time on the new pod, Jeremiah Watkins. First name Amish, last name African American. Doesn't get blacker. Yeah. 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 You've probably heard that one before. Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, for years, uh, black people have been disappointed when I walk to the stage and it's not a, a black guy. Yeah. Well, you hear yeah. coming to the stage, Jeremiah Walk. Like when you do black shows, they remember your name. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the thing when you do black shows and like you're white, because I came up in black rooms, it takes them about three years to get your name right. You Sometimes I've been called up as Yan. Give it up for Yam. Give it up for Yinny. Give it up for Yanni Poop. Give it up for Pap. Um, but I got called Jeroma Napkins at a show once, and I was like, ah, that's not even remotely close. Jeroma but. Napkins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just got a tough time, but I would think, figure they would be easy. Jeremiah Watkins, they would get it. Yeah. They'd be like, oh, man, I got a cousin in North Carolina named Jeremiah right, Watkins. exactly, exactly. Yeah, and then you walk in, it is a little... It's jarring. Yeah. Like, hey, guys. <laughs> well, your first name is, that is a good, strong... Like, when I hear Jeremiah, I think, like, a, a, a witch is going to get burned or there's going to be butter churned yeah. or there's a horse and buggy. <laughs> Jeremiah is a good, I think even maybe Harrison Ford's character might've been named Jeremiah in witness. Good fucking Amish movie. I'm just pulling it out, taking it. I knew you Ooh. didn't see it. Not a lot of people did. No. Yeah. No. Old school. I, I've seen Jeremiah Johnson. Right. I mean, now Harrison Ford was discovered by, Steven Spielberg as a roofer. You were discovered <laughs> doing Christian porn. Is there a similarity in your trajectory as Harrison, as Harrison Ford's? Ford? Yeah, I, I think I'm only seasoning and getting better with age. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, my old stuff is a little hard to watch. Yeah. But the new stuff is really cooking. Yeah. <laughs> Simon Rex started uh, as a guy who jerked off on camera. I love Simon Rex, but... He's kind of like the male Kardashian. He's what we have as an example of how you can get started if you got a nice cock. The American dream. Yeah, it's the American dream. <laughs> yeah. You did not start in softcore Christian porn. I did not, no. 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 You started in stand-up. Stand-up comedy. <laughs> and what I like about you is you're kind of a boundaryless guy. Yeah. You, I don't know. Like when I do your podcast, I don't know what's going to happen. You oh, throw on no. a wig. There's wigs come on. I know. There's a lot of off. stuff happening. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I almost feel like when I do your podcast, I am backstage at a drag show or <laughs> or I'm a cross dresser getting ready to give head for crack. It's true. <laughs> you know, it's dark, you know, it's sweaty in there. <laughs> There's wigs flying everywhere. There's, you know, cross, everybody's lowering their voice. Lower everyone their lowers their voice. Their Characters voice, come out. Head. Come on. You know, that's probably what happens when like a uh, when like a cross dresser prostitute is about to have a John come over. They probably just like crack their back and they go, they go, me, 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 me. They practice their high voice and then they just grab a rig and put it on and they're like, all right. And then they just fucking slap some black lipstick on and open the door. And if that happens, you're either about to suck some dick or do Jeremiah Watkins podcast. Hello. Jeremiah Wonders. Hi. Now you do Scissor Bros as well. Yes. And it's going good. It's going good. Yeah. yeah. And it's you and Stevie Weeby. Yes, Stevie Weeby. Who is the brother. Is he the full brother of Bobby Lee? 
He's a full brother. No, he's the 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 more you get to know him, the more you're like, oh yeah, they're brothers. They're brothers, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah. So when you meet when you were with Stevie Weeby, you get an insight. Now you got a full picture of what the family life must look like and how much their parents fucked up. <laughs> That's one way to put it. Because you meet Bobby, and you're like, I get a sense that you meet the other brother, and you're like, oh, no. Oh, this was, is the missing piece. This is the missing piece. Right, no, right, yeah, right. the parents really did fuck up. All our parents fucked up in some sense. In different sense. ways. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Because we're doing this. Of course. Yeah. And I love your story because you were you were, you were were brought up in the church. I was brought up in the church. You were brought up in the church. Yes. Little Jeremiah. And now you're not in the church. Not, no, I, I mean, I'm not in the church. Uh, it, it's weird. I have a very L.A. way of the way I describe. Uh, I'm a very spiritual person now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's yeah. such an L.A. way of describing, like, you know, I still have a relationship, but, you know, it's, I don't, it's not organized. I don't go to the organized religion anymore. I've yeah. kind of, you know, blazed my own trail. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's also an uh, easy way to just get out of the conversation. Just by going, I'm spiritual, man. Like, just leave yeah. me alone. Like, yeah, I don't yeah, want to, yeah. I don't want to, I don't know. Well, what's good about that also is people know right away that I'm not, I don't have an agenda and I'm not trying to push anything on them because that's right. a big part of religion that, is, that turns a lot of people off. Right. As soon as you say Catholicism, Christian, Baptist, whatever, people are like, oh, is this person going to try to convert me in a right. conversation right now? And that's right. like. You know, that's the last thing that you want to make somebody feel. Right. It's right. like I'm gonna I'm gonna teach you some things right now. It's like, ugh. Right, right. Yeah. It feels like the conversation before a banker calls you or a telemarketer calls you. You know how they right. try to do that oh, little yeah. small talk at the beginning? Yeah, yeah. And you're like, hey, you don't come on. Let's I know. Let's cut to the chase. Yeah, here. let's cut to the chase. Yeah. You want me to move my money into this account so you can get a percentage. Yeah, like the, the yeah. telemarketer who's clearly reading off his wrist. So how's your day going right now? Yeah. Is you having a good day? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no? Yeah. Yeah, it's nice weather out today, right? Do you get a lot of calls from Germany? <laughs> <laughs> or Austria? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a, I don't know the difference between Bavaria, Austria, and, right. and Germany accent. Lots, lots of calls from Germany. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so would you be interested in the product? Or? That's what's yeah. supposed to be your accent. It, it, oh, a thousand percent. <laughs> yeah. I talk about it on stage every once in a while. Like, yeah. I'm like, if I, you know, if I would have came out with a German accent right now, like nobody would have batted an eye. Yeah. And then I just, I just go off on, uh, as a German guy for a while. I think you would have tried to prevent what happened though. I see it in your eyes. I would have been one of the good ones. Yeah, if you were there, you would have. You guys would... are really not that bad, I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, a few of them are annoying, but I get it. But seriously, <laughs> like, really, is that many? Come on. Yeah, and when I'll I give you one or two, but come on. <laughs> <laughs> like go a little easy on them. German, you can't really do a German accent without getting a little gayish. You got to get a little homoerotic. You know, you know it's funny about the gay, uh, the German accent. The German accent can only come in two brands: murderous sociopath, <laughs> yes, or flamboyant gay. It's true. There's no middle of the road German who's just. It's either you always put it, give it to lasp, or it's it's put some in savage. There's no middle. You yeah, know yeah. that? Like you can't do the accent. It has to be like, yes, mm -hmm. my name is Mark. I'm trying to meet some guys. Mm -hmm. Come to my flat. Come to my place. Or it's like, welcome. We are there. Go a single file to the shower. <laughs> There's no in between. You have been tortured tonight. <laughs> you will keep your eyes open and you will like it. <laughs> If that's up to you, if you'd like that, yeah. then, you know, we could totally talk about it or not. I don't know. Yeah. It's no middle. Yeah, there's no, no middle, there's yeah, no the, middle the class. Yeah. Yeah. I the, met a couple like uh, 100% German guys that were friends with my roommate and uh, they wait, were. First of all, they're, I just want to just point out real quick. I don't think there's anything less than a 100% German guy. I think that's what Hitler was trying to make sure we keep, of. We keep it pure. <laughs> <laughs> you never meet like a German guy who's also, you know, a quarter Puerto Rican. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, my German cousin. Uh, he's also Nicaraguan, but we don't talk about that. <laughs> As very awkward as the family reunions and stuff. Um, he is uh, literally as a black sheep as a family. Yeah. <laughs> I think only recently it's like, you know, they're they're new and rare. 
Yeah. It's like a new, it's like the new Teslas that sell out quick. Like oh, yeah. mixed Germans are new. That's a new phenomenon. Oh, no, no. Yeah. yeah. That's like, they're, you know, we obviously in the U.S. are pushing diversity so hard yeah. with everything. Like their diversity is like, <laughs> somebody's like, this is an Irish German over yeah, here. And, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's very... You it's ne- good, you know. It's uh, you don't meet a mixed German who's over fifty five. <laughs> even the <Yeah>. dogs, <laughs> even the, the even jobs, the, the dogs are purebred. The dogs yeah. are purebred. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're not uh, mixing with even the dachshunds. Yeah, and even the dogs don't have a lot of personality. No, they're they're either super gay or they're evil. <laughs> 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 it's one or the other. Either super gay or evil may be the title. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. They're and yeah. They, you have to like keep them like super, super occupied in work and efficiency, yeah. like a German Shepherd. Yeah. Or it will bite your child. Can we just go to the ballpark? Yeah. I just want to. I just want to run around with you. I want to bite you off. I want to. I want to kill you. I want to. There's such a black person. I want to go down to you. <laughs> yeah. They have Ger- mm-hmm. pit, the pinchers, the shepherds. Mm-hmm. What other is a German? That those are the two big German. They got the Dash Hound. Yeah, Dash Hound. Dash Hound. They got the Wine Rhino. The Germans made a lot of dogs. Yes. Because they like to control things. We like to control the genetics. And yeah, they like to have a. They have like to have a say in the outcome of what the species is going to look like. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. I don't know if anyone's ever really talked about that. That yeah, I mean they have how many fucking? Let's look up how many German. There's got to be a lot of German breeds of dogs. There's got to be a lot. Yeah. 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 I mean, how many are there? 15 German dog breeds that will probably surprise you. Yeah, by surprise you meaning <laughs> fucking bite your kid. Yeah, no kidding. I know we have the Dodge Hunt. Listen, oh, an American Eskimo. American Eskimo. See, we made it very sneaky by calling it American. <laughs> <laughs> he was also a German dog. Uh, I love where you find these, Jesse. We're on womansday.com. <laughs> the Dash Hound. Vise is your homepage, Jesse. Uh, bookmark. <laughs> Check it daily. <laughs> <laughs> See? A little gay or evil. Yeah, it's a little gay or evil. There's no other. D- so this one's called the Eurasure. I actually have not seen uh, this dog before. I, I've literally never heard of uh, a Eurasure, uh, but... The Eurasia may only be mid size. First, we tried to erase uh, the Jews, then yeah. we tried to <laughs> erase the dog. That's very, that's very appropriate to have the name Eurasia because yes. we, we like the thing we like to do is erase. Yes, we like to just erasing is one of our favorite sports and pastimes here in Germany. That's we always <laughs> clear our brother <laughs> We like to just erase what we consider to be the mess. Pomeranian. Pomeranian. I had no idea that was a German breed. Yeah, I thought they were Armenian. Because <laughs> Pomeranian is spelled with an I A N. Yeah, that's it usually. It mark, it says buddy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because that's Kardashian. The right, Armenians always right. end in an I A N. Tricky Pomeranian. That is very odd. It's a little German bitch, isn't it? A little yeah. German bitch. Little catty. You little fucking bitch. Oh, a giant on her hair. Oh, so, well, we oh, forgot about that one. That's a big one. Yeah, so, the Rottweiler. The Rottweiler. This is my Rottweiler. Yes. So is His it name is Hank. Do not ask why. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it's funny because the Rottweilers usually have the same collars on that perverted German guys wear in German gay porn. Yep. It's with like the, the locks, collar with the, the, yeah. the huge... <laughs> The huge bolt, like the chain lock. Yeah. Are you are you hooking up a bike right yeah, now? Yeah, you're either that? hooking up a bike or you're about to get a bottle stuck in your asshole. <laughs> bottle service. <laughs> bottle service. Yeah, they have a different idea of bottle yeah, yeah, service yeah. in German. Yeah. yeah, German point is always a little twisted. Yeah, it's something dark. Yeah, it hits me. It hits me. I can't feel it unless it goes in. Wait, go back. I want to learn about. The Rottweiler, the Rottweiler. Yes. but eventually, uh, so the muscular, <laughs> courageous breed <laughs> was developed by the Romans to contain German tribes. Wow, they flipped it on them. Oh, wow! So it was developed by the Romans, and the German tribes took it and fucking put them on the Romans. <sighs> Yeah, but eventually Rotties became the foundation stock for many German breeds. Rottweilers are often one of the breeds most likely to be associated with aggressive behavior um, or big time gayness. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard them called Rotty. Rotty. Come here, Rotty. Yes. Come here. Yeah, there we go again. My Rotty just bit your child's face off. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm there, we, so sorry. there we go again. It's either Rottweiler. 
Was war da? Was war da? Rati, komm her. <lacht> Why would you come back to Papa? Seriously. We I'm going back on Sun, but I haven't come home recently. Yeah, we're on to something here, We dude. are really on to Let's something. go to another one. Yeah. Va this is the vine rhino. Also known as the silver ghost. <laughs> That's scary. The he, silver ghost the of a dog? The silver ghost. Have you heard of the tale of the silver ghost? <laughs> uh, I haven't heard it, but I'm sure it has something to do with hunting Jews. <laughs> <laughs> You know how Jews like the silver? Yeah. <laughs> yes, and that's where we find some. That's how we find some. Because the dog can sniff silver better than the Jew. <laughs> when you hear nickels hit the ground, <laughs> two things will be looking for them. Yeah. The silver ghost. The silver ghost will be coming. Listen, Bobby, have you heard the myth <laughs> of the silver ghost? Hide your gold. Oh, hide your silver. Listen, oh. this is a tale we told kids to make them do their homework. If you don't, the silver ghost will find you. <laughs> <laughs> we could be able to release this. I mean, can you do comedy? <laughs> can we do comedy anymore? We're having this a good is time. The 80s or what? Yeah, yeah I mean, let's bring it back to the 80s. Hey, fucking Come bitches. On. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. A fucking cunt! Come on! <laughs> These fucking broads, why are they talking? Give me me a sandwich. <laughs> God, these fucking fanooks left and right. I look, what's going on here? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, so the silver ghost. The silver ghost. Also, yeah. A little gayish, right? The silver ghost. So yeah, you know, he might hunt you. He may just steal your wardrobe. Yeah, he's the <laughs> silver ghost. Yeah, he's he's a, a vine vima or a silver ghost. Or a silver ghost, whatever you whatever your preference is. Oh, I forgot about this little fucker. Oh yes, the schnauzer. The schnauzer. Uh, schnauzer is the barn and stable breed from Germany. Mm -hmm. Uh. Yeah, I don't know what he does, but they come in different sizes, miniature, standard, and giant. I mean, what is it, a fucking iPhone? It does, but the Schnauzer does look like the German dog who'd be like, do you have your papers? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very, like, subtle. It's like just looking at you like, seriously, like, I'm not trying to be a dick or anything. Just, do you have some? Uh, Mr. Goldberg says here you're going to Switzerland. <laughs> I don't think so. Hands up. <laughs> Come with me, Doctor Jones. Show me Jones. your paws, please. <laughs> you always know the German smoke with the third finger too. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> just like awkward. Yeah, maybe that's where Dice got it yeah. from. Just a, he got it from a German dude. Just <laughs> we've been expecting you, Doctor Jones. Hickory dickory dog. <laughs> the German dice clay. German dice clay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what would we call it? Uh, Anheim dice clay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Hello, my name is Alan Dyscliff. What's, what's going on here? Seriously, what's wrong with people these days? How can I take a talk? The mouse went up the clock. The clock strikes three. Boom, she puts in the pussy. <laughs> German Andrew Dyscliff. Yeah. How come someone hasn't done that character? I don't know. I don't Jeremiah, know. it's you, bro. Next episode, Jeremiah Wonder is hosted by Andrew. Anheim what? Dice Clay. <laughs> Hickory Dickory Dog. The clock went tick tick tock. God. I shot heroin in my vein. Some Jews got on a train. <laughs> 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 that was good off the dome right there. <laughs> I did. Uh, I did the, the real story. Yeah, uh, if you're doing a German rap uh, from the 1950s, you're looking for something that rhymes with train. Yeah, and then everything yeah, else, uh, everything just fills in. Everything <laughs> outside of rap. <laughs> uh, he popped into the comedy store one night, and I had to follow him. And he crushed and went like it was, everybody was doing smaller sets. It was like on a Monday potluck night, so everybody's doing like eight to ten minute sets. He did like half an hour, uh, did his thing, and then I had to follow him. And I went on as Andrew Dice Gay, right? <laughs> right after I was like, hi, hickory dickory dog. I'd love to suck some cock. <laughs> That's amazing. And uh, I don't know if he saw it or not. I'm kind of hoping he didn't because he probably would have hated it. Yeah, he's probably. But it crushed. I'm sure crowd. it did. It was, That's a great uh decision to make that's a choice that's a strong choice it, to make it, after he goes I was up like, i literally i was like this might freaking 
eat it. Right. I was like, I'm just going to go for it. And it worked big. It worked. It worked, yeah. Did you off. have bits that you thought of before to rhyme or how, how long did you do it for? No, I, I had the, the, there's a penis in the, in the, in the corner. I was, and I was like, Hey, like, like, like keep playing something for me. And I was just like vamping and just riffing. And I did like this Andrew Dice Gay, the musical. And I was just, <laughs> just like all over the stage and like, yeah, you got a little class. I know that right now. I know that right now you refer to it as a penis. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you would ask me, if I was just telling the same story, mm -hmm. I would have said, there's a guy at a piano. Right, There's a right, guy right. on the piano. Right. There's two types of people, I think, in this world. Mm. People who refer to it properly as a penis. As a penis. Which is a funny word in and of itself. Right. A penis. A penis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a penis. Mm -hmm. Or people who go, guy on a piano. Right, right, guy right. Guy playing the piano. I think, all, I think it's more, I think I'm more trashy. I think I just refer to that as a penis because I'm more just like music musicality rather than class if that makes sense yes but yeah. that's classy a I little bit so. yeah that's classy so. yeah class is nice that's nice like if i was a woman and i'm looking to marry a guy i would m rather marry the guy who calls it a pianist mm -hmm. than a guy who says than a guy who goes guy on a piano guy on piano guy on a piano i mean it's not a guy yeah. on a piano that's a fucking penis if yeah. you know how to play uh, you know how to play the instrument you deserve your own name yeah Violinist, they call it violinist. Violinist, yeah. So what? It shouldn't be guy on the piano. It yeah. should be a pianist. But nobody refers to it as a pianist because you don't get any fucking respect. It's anymore. rare people say saxophonist. They're usually like sax man or sax yeah. guy. Yeah, you know, that's one of those. This like yeah. Yeah, I don't like that either. He deserves it. Yeah, sax in it, but it's maybe it's just a hard it's, word. Yeah, it might be too hard. Yeah, because yeah. violin, but violinist is long too. That's very long. Yeah. But people, I think people respect violinists. Cellist. Cellist gets cellist. it. Cellist yeah. gets it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Atheist. Atheist gets yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nihilist, they get yeah, it too. Yeah, yeah, they get Nihilist. it. Nihilist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, pessimist. Uh-huh. Yeah, so pianist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you play piano? I do. Not great, but it was something that uh, a few years ago uh, I started playing, and I, I was taking lessons a couple years ago, like especially during the pandemic. I was something I tried to get way better at and so like i know a bunch of chords and stuff now that i can uh, fool people into s making it appear that i can play all right yeah yeah now you haven't gone full blown rebellion against your childhood you walk through the world cautiously still a little bit yeah yeah i'd say so yeah yeah you don't look at the stuff that you learned as like man that's bullshit you go hey there may be something to it but i also want to have some fun Yes. And I like to make people laugh. Exactly. Yeah. That was the thing with you my You don't family. have like a fucking, you know, you don't have like a nose ring on your face <laughs> with like an A. You know, the people go the other way yeah. and you're like, that's just another oh, religion. Dude, yeah. Where you got like an A over yeah, here. It's an upside down cross in their chest. Yeah. Like, okay. Like, it's all bullshit. <laughs> you're, go, you're walking through, you still have the sh sh valley, walking through the valley of the death thing. I think I still have respect for where I came from, if that makes sense. And that's the, the part, part of that is Midwestern just roots, like kind of beat into you. Like you have pride from where you come from, but also it's a, it's a respect and also, um, to still believing in parts of the, the big picture, if that makes sense. Yeah. Now what is, I know. Cause I'm thinking, I'm looking at you. It's your Midwestern Jer Jeremiah Watkins. Yeah. It's part of your personality. Right. 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 I've been in the Midwest. The good thing about being a comedian is we get to see the, other all parts of cultures the, yeah. so midwestern people very nice mm -hmm. little passive aggressive sometimes sometimes can be passive aggressive but very nice but will usually tell you to your face though if they have a problem with you in a nicer way in a nicer way um what does new york jeremiah watkins look like because i know i was i was i was watching you talk and i was going oh that would be me I would be less, and I'd be more. Eh, eh, eh. So what? What is what is a New York Jeremiah Watkins like? I mean, if there's a New York, I'll start. I'll kick it off. I'll yeah, just yeah, ask. Yeah. I'll ask New York Jeremiah Watkins some questions. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 for sure. yeah, yeah. So like, um, so what's up, man? What, so, what is play? Oh, oh that, that's outside. Oh, that's I, outside. Dude, yeah. Don't fucking do that because you're giving away that you don't know that. If you're New York Jeremiah Watkins, you know that's the fucking ice cream man. You know that that guy's probably either a pedophile, and that's why he has that job. Okay, sorry, sorry. Here, yeah. let me get in carrier. Let yeah. me get in carrier. Okay. Yeah, that's I'm the ready. fucking sound of the ice cream guy. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's up, guys? So I'm I'm here with Jeremiah Watkins, uh, otherwise known as. Uh, waka waka, yeah. You know I mean, he uh, he got big first uh, in the scenes in Bensonhurst, then he moved from Staten Island, came up in the rooms there, um, did Jersey. Uh, 
he, he used to open for Rich Voss all the time. Uh, he's a reg, he was a regular on Opie and Anthony. Um, he's now got, he's got a show with uh, Chris DiStefano called. Oh! <laughs> you can check that podcast out on uh, Anthony Camilla's networks. Um, give it up, uh, everybody, for the New York comic Jeremiah Watkins. Yeah, suck my taint. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jeremiah, you came in, up in New York, man. Like, yeah. What's it like being a New York comic when you go to L.A.? Like, do you like L.A.? Uh, I like it for the bitches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, you, yeah. Girls are nice out there, right? No, the comics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, what do you like? What's it like, man? Like you came up, like, you know what I mean? You, you, did you date a lot of like Puerto Rican girls, black girls? Like, oh, what? fat asses! You like a fat? I love a fat ass in my cock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fucking great, man. So you grew up like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're one of the best physical comics out there. Yes, yeah, uh, you know the strange from New York, but yeah, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, most New York guys are just more like, lean against just the like wall. The, yeah, yeah, that's most New York. That's a lot of New York, yeah. Lean against the wall, too Lean cool for this wall, shit. Yeah, yeah, above being there. Yeah, you know. what is this, a show? Yeah, come on. I get silly. I get dumb. Yeah. <laughs> I, I get retarded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. coming up, like, well, you grew up, I think, uh, you're from Ridgewood, Queens, half German, half Italian, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, that, don't tell the other side. <laughs> That's a good one, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you had that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I have cancer. Oh, cool. Yeah, I uh, saw the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Now your first, uh, your first special that you put out, mm -hmm. uh, fucking cancer can be funny. Yeah. That yeah. was like um, a lot of people thought that that was like a tour de force on like being anti PC, you know. Yeah, I'm a Mac guy. Yeah, you are, right? Yeah. You're a what guy? A Mac guy. You said anti-PC. A Mac guy? Yeah, I'm a Mac guy. Oh, you Mac? Like Apple. Oh, you yeah. You anti-PC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sorry. You fucking New York guys are quick. I'm three steps ahead of you. I'm three L trains ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> New York Jeremiah Watkins, everybody. His next special is called I'm, New I'm three L train stops ahead of you. <laughs> Which would be and also old York, old York, yeah. So that would be that would be New York, be Jeremiah, New York Jeremiah Walker. Yeah. yeah, yeah, man. You think you'd have a different haircut, or you think you'd stay with that? I would have a different haircut for you sure. Would, yeah, because right now you look like you could be in a Broadway production of Grease for sure with that hair. Yeah, for sure. Like you, that hair can come out like either moving a little bit or gelled down, going um bop doop da why are we singing Hanson? <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, ba, do, 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 ba, boom, ba. Yeah, yeah. Hey, there ain't doing to turn. I don't know any of the words. All I know is that they were trying to be the Jackson 5, but they were, were they white kids from the Midwest? They're white kids from, I think, somewhere in the South, if I remember. I think they're from... Oklahoma or something like I that. I just wanted to know if you were keeping up with Hanson. Look it up. I yeah. think Oklahoma. That would be hilarious if he knew exactly where they were from I mean, and what they were Tulsa. doing. They were all brothers, right? What's Hanson up to now? <laughs> Let me guess. Do they know. have a podcast? Tulsa. Tulsa. Woo! Bro, you nailed it. Mm -hmm. How did you know that? Exactly. I was doing... Um, was Hanson the music that got you out of the church? <laughs> Did you hear Umbop and you were like, I got to go live in the world? Dad, I have to convert. <laughs> you're like, those kids are having too much fun. I got to get out of here. I'm tired of listening. You raise me up. I need to listen to... Umbop. <laughs> I was uh, doing some shows in Tulsa and I remember randomly... At one of the venues that uh, Hanson was about to do the same venue that I was doing. And uh, somebody's like, oh, yeah, I, I, they're, they're from here. So it's just one of those random things that I remember from years ago. That wow. I was like, I'm pretty sure they're from Tulsa. Yeah, that's a good. If you were wondering, the the brothers Hanson. Yeah. Because all three of them were brothers. Yeah. 
It was funny because there's a, just like also a lot of people don't know, Kings of Leon, they're brothers and cousin. I think they're all related. Oh, really? Yeah. Caleb, Followell, and... Yeah. yeah, they're all related. And a yeah. lot of people don't know that. And then it's funny because there's always one... Let's, I'm just going to talk very LA and honest right now. There's always one uh, look challenged one. Always. In the brothers groups. Uh, they try to put it out of focus slightly yeah, on the album just cover. Like, he's like the bassist, like... The guy in Kings of Leon, I think he's one of the guitar guys. I think he's the first cousin. He's not as good looking as Caleb and the lead singer guy. Mm -hmm. And then Hanson. Yeah, there's so there's... There's always in the boy band the one who is... Wait a yeah. second, though. Those are the three Hanson kids now? Yep. I stand corrected. Yes, the, you they, do. the kid grew up nice because all three of them are fucking beautiful to look at. But they're shot in black and white, so I don't know if they were at a Dave Chappelle show. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he does all his photos in black and white. Yeah. Like, we get it. You're hey, an icon, but like... Timeless. Legend. Yeah, legend. We get Goat. it. Goat. Yeah, uh, yeah. Everything's yeah. got to look like fucking right. the honeymooners. Historic. Yeah. Look at Hanson now. Yeah, they actually... They, they, they kept their looks. Yeah. yeah. I, it's so weird to look at that. The young kid is a man now. I remember that little kid. Look at them. They look like three girls. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, if that kid decided to go trans, he wouldn't have to do much. Mm -hmm. All he'd have to do is block the testosterone. I don't even think he needed estrogen. I like the mm, cop of feel. You yeah. Know I, mean? <laughs> I mean, that one on the left, the lead singer kid, looks like a girl named Sarah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. The only one that looks like a dude is the older one. Yeah, and that guy was just like smoking a lot of pot. These kids needed puberty. They needed puberty bad yeah. to, to turn dude. I mean, it looks like the girls' album. That's crazy. That's I mean, yeah. the two of the two on the left. That kid was what was he three or four or five? The young one playing drums. Young, yeah, yeah. Now was that real or would, do you think that they just set that up? They the like drum they, kit? like they did Melly Vanilli. Like you think that four, four year old was playing drums? Can a four year old play drums? I I've seen videos online of uh, of little kids like that playing drums and it's pretty crazy impressive. But I don't I don't know if he was actually playing the drums in that or not. Did they ever do anything else besides oom bop, or did they ever explain to the people what oom bop was about? Right. What the, the deep what, meaning? That'd be funny. They, um bop. Yeah. If they came out now and they're like, "Look, this is what oom bop was really about. Yeah. It was about peace between the Ukraine and Russia." And we were just way ahead of that way story. Way ahead of our time. Way ahead of our story. Yeah. Are we looking up Moon Bop's meaning? Okay, yeah. The Hanson totally family are. explains the meaning of their hit song. I can't wait. I'm, <laughs> oh, I, this dude. exclusive is coming in hot on long days. <laughs> <laughs> this is, guys, if you have been wondering what the meaning of Moon Bop is, uh, Giannis and Jeremiah are here to provide. Mm -hmm. It's been 20 years since Hanson released their hit Moon Bop. And people who grew up listening to the catch some have have always wondered what it meant. Guess what? No, they haven't. Nobody's ever asked that question until this podcast or when GMA decided to fucking make it up. Have you ever heard anyone ask you what the meaning of Mbop was? No, not when you know when you're like in any music theory classes in, in any college. Like today, we will be going over the meaning of the hit song. Mbop from Hanson. <laughs> it's been on all of our minds since the 90s, since it trampled into our ear canals. And today we will be revealing the true meaning. Now we'll introduce music expert, whomever, to, and then there's like a whole lecture on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people ask what Mbop means, Zach says. Well, Mbop as a word, it represents time. Oh, does it, Zach? Oh, yeah. Does it? Or is that something you made up now that you're an adult? Umbop just sounds like fucking noises that kids make. <laughs> it represents the fact that time passes very quickly. And so in a story about reaching for what's important and kind of driving towards the impossible dream, Umbop is telling you, go now, go now, go now, because in a moment, in a Umbop, life will be over and have passed you by. You are full of shit. We're calling BS on you. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Umbop. There's no way when they wrote that, the passage of time. You're seven years old. You're a time traveler at seven? You're able to fucking think like Henry David Thoreau at seven years old? Get the fuck <laughs> out of here. Are you H.G. Wells? Who are you? <laughs> yeah. Do you buy that for one second, Jeremiah Watkins? There's no way, Giannis Papas. Jesse, you buy that bullshit? I actually do. I believe it. You believe him, I kids? I believe it. You don't think there was like a, they had, they, it's a publicist called... 
Uh, you need to have an answer ready. You need to have an answer. They're going to ask you what umbat meant yeah. because that's the only thing people could ask you. <laughs> yeah. We, we, people have talked about every, all they know you from is umbat. That's all they'll ever know you for uh, because you're not that musically talented. So now that you guys are adults and you're trying to make a comeback, we need to find a new angle on umbat. So. What we came up with is there's actually a meaning behind the <laughs> noise of Umbop. I want to see a feature length movie about this. I would love to see the movie Umbop. Umbop. And it's about the passage of time. Yep. And so what would that movie look like to you, an Umbop movie? Three kids. Ooh. Three do kids. The song. So it would be a biopic. I think I think they find a journal or like scrolls from another uh time period where they see the words Umbop carved in and, and they're like that's it. That's a song. And then, like, as they get more famous, demons from the past start coming and reminding them that they've stolen <laughs> it's stolen valor from uh, from an ancient, like, a conjuring of spirits from the past. By ancient conjuring of spirits that they stole from, do you mean black music? Yes. Got it. Because <laughs> I was thinking a different movie. It was uh, Jason yeah. They, I said mm, <laughs> years ago. <laughs> their parents, their parents go to like a go to like a club. Yeah, uh, you know to be you know because they to hear some music and they see uh, a a black band playing a song and guys going um bah, da, da, and he just goes his kids grow up and he has the idea and then he forces his kids to say um bop. yeah say it. But then you know, the, then the family comes after this. something like right, that. Right, like, and then you say "mbop" in the mirror three times, and then an old black man with sunglasses is like "skoon up mbop." Doesn't it sound like an, a black guy scatting if you really break down the lyrics of "mbop"? It doesn't sound like three white kids. Not at all. Uh -huh. When I first heard it, I didn't think it was. Um, but that's because they're doing black music. It's the same thing when I first heard the Beastie Boys. I thought they were black. Same thing I thought when I first heard Janis Joplin. I thought she was black. Because back then they didn't have the internet. I was born in the 1920s. <laughs> so you would hear it. There was no videos or TV and shit. So get this. I, I used to work in morning radio in Kansas City. And uh, I used to have no music knowledge whatsoever. And they played uh, Run DMC for me. They're like, they're like, hey, have you heard of this band? They're called Run DMC. I'm like, no. I'm like... They sound like the Black Beastie Boys. <laughs> and I almost got fired on the spot. There was hundreds of callers that were calling. They were like, fire this guy. He knows nothing about music. And like, yeah. Yeah, that's because the Beastie Boys got so big. Yeah. I think they were white. It took the rap to places outside of New York. But it's funny. That is a tr that's true. When I went to college, was we didn't grow up with Scott Joplin. Like I didn't know Scott. Did I call her Scott Joplin Scott, before? Yeah, yeah. I'm fucking retarded. Did I call her Scott Joplin before? <laughs> Janis Joplin. Janis said Joplin. Janis. Yeah, said I said Janis. Janis. Yeah. Okay, when I first heard Janis Joplin was when I went to college, and I thought she was black, and like, and when I saw she was white, I was surprised. Same thing with the BC Boys, mm -hmm. because we grew up here, and it was just like all the rappers were black. Yeah. Now that aside, I was I liked where you were going. You were writing Mbop, a horror movie. Yes. They're, ho they're so they're being haunted. It's sort of like you steal black music, and then the musician that they stole it from are haunting like them. the Candyman. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you sing Umbop, what happens to you? The jazz guy appears and he beats you up like fucking. What happens? I think so. I think you start having. I think you're you're uh, like every moment of fame that you get, the weaker on the inside you become. Like 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 yes. the, your skyrocket to fame. Immediately, like you get so big that you have to fall immediately, which happened to them. God, so it's like Dane Cook's career. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just telling the truth. <laughs> no, I like it. Would you want, dude? This is actually a good movie. Mbop, the horror story, right? Based on a couple of kids who steal the thing, they get famous. Kind of Stranger Things kind of vibes. Yeah, it's like you know, it's like people who get famous. This is a story that happens all the time. Like people get famous, but they have a dirty secret. Yeah, the the, the reason why they're famous isn't and true. and in the curse, like they're they're cursed. Like you'll never have another hit if you take this from us. Yes. And then they're like, we're gonna do it anyway. So they have to. Yeah. They're. They got to try. They, maybe they have to murder and do things to keep the secret. Or to keep the fame. To keep the fame. And they can only kill so many people for so long. Yeah. And then that's why they start to drop off because the guilt starts eating away the at them. The guilt. This yeah. is like based on, and I like all, like all great fictions. 
it's based on something that happens. Yeah. That's so that's a fascinating story that we haven't really seen in the movies based on a guy whose like career's a lie. Yeah. You know? And it happens a lot of times where people like steal something of or course. or they tell or they get a famous lie. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they that lie makes them big and then they gotta keep it going. Yeah. That, stressful. Yeah, that's stressful. That's, that, that's stress right there. That's like Ed. What was it? Edgar Allan Poe's The Crow. What is it? Where he could heal the guilt. He could hear the. Oh, he buried yeah. the body under the boards. Uh huh. Yeah. You still hear it. Yeah. Yeah. You can still hear it. I want to make jokes, but I don't want to be mean. But I want to make oh, no, jokes. No. I. I want to make I, jokes. I know. I. A lot of these people have taken enough of a beating, but I mean, can't we at least make jokes? Like, do you think Steve Red is easy? You're gonna freaking say that, dude. <laughs> you think he just hears planes crashing in his head all the time? <laughs> it's just small. Like, yeah, I'm kidding. He, he, it, it's all out. I don't even blame him, dude. I don't even know why people are upset. You go to L.A. You don't fucking go to L.A. to tell people who you really are. Right. You create a person. You create, Why a, are people you, you so create upset? a persona. Yeah. Why are people so upset? I create. I mean, I created a better version. You made of myself up this whole story that you were some fucking guy from the Midwest who came from the church who got out. When I know you're just a guy from New York who came up in this scene. <laughs> yeah. Who invented the stool hump and the lean wall? Come on. <laughs> Get in there. <laughs> so you came to L.A. You did what? Oh no! When I uh, when I I so I used to go to private Christ Christian school right growing up. I when I went to public school, I created the best version of myself because yeah. I got to start over. Right, like you have. So I had like up until seventh grade. I'm like, okay, everything that I've learned. And up that best version point, of yourself had escaped a terrorist attack. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine you're just some savvy seven year old that goes to a new school and he's like, guys, I escaped from nine eleven. They're like, really? And really? He becomes the fucking coolest kid in the world. Yeah. And he's got to keep that going. Yeah. So you, I get what you're saying, though. You got there and you, you know were, what I mean? Because these kids didn't know you they, when you were picking your nose or you were no, the, yeah, coming so you in your mouth. To, that, that's one like thing about when you're starting over, like in either a new school or a new city, you get to decide which versions of yourself you're going to bring to the surface right. and you get to bury the other parts. So right. when I went to public school, I brought out the better versions of what I've learned over the years and stuff like that. Right, right. Yeah, and, you know, but I went to one high school where I came in too hot yeah. my freshman year, and I left the high school because I was like, I, I bombed. Really? Yep. Wait, explain to me here. So here, here's what happened. How so, bad did you let, bomb? Oh, let me tell you. <laughs> so up until seventh grade, I went to one school, okay? Is that Christian school? Up to That's seven, Christian school. Right. Eighth grade was my first public school, and okay. I crushed it there. Made a lot of good friends. I love how you're referring all of this in comedy terms. Well, you know, he's going. I bombed at this school, and then I crushed it there. I just want to remind you, you're at school. You're yeah. not on stage. Yeah, I don't know. I was crushing. <laughs> <laughs> I was the funny new kid. I was crushing. Um, so then, on my ninth grade year, my aunt. Uh, they had opened up a new school in the district that uh, that I wasn't supposed to go to. It was a different school that was literally five minutes out of the way of this other school. Was it like a for underprivileged kids or something? Because it's your aunt. She's in the church. No, oh, she okay. was. She's uh, no. She's very liberal. She uh, has taught in public school for years. She's like, hey, there's a new facility. They've got the brand new basketball team. All this stuff, brand new everything. You should come over here with me. I'll drive you to school in the morning. All that. You know what I mean? And I was like, oh, okay. I checked it out. I was like, okay. I can make new friends. So I left the friends that I just made at that eighth grade school. And I'm like, I'm going to take what I just learned there and kill even harder at this other school. Dude, I came in too hot, which, you know, I've had a tendency to to do from time to time. You make strong choices. I make strong choices yeah. where either people jive with it or they're like, I really don't like this guy. But that's why you do what it's great. You're like, only Jeremiah would have gone for that. Right. And it worked. Yeah. That's like your show, Stand Up on the Spot. Yeah. Which is going to be, which is already a smash hit. And it's, it could be, that show could get fucking enormous. We'll see. Yeah, it's going I'm, to. I'm, I'm excited about mark it. Mark this fucking date market right here. Boom. Put something over. I'm saying this now on in January. Where where are we? Who knows? Who we're, knows? Yeah, we're in May of 2022. May 2022. I, I there's a real short. I have enjoy me now because I have Alzheimer's. <laughs> enjoy me now. I will be on the planet, but I will also not be here right. because I have early onset. Yeah, it's May 2022. Yeah. I'm saying this now. Watch stand up on the spot is just perfect. 
So it's going to fucking blow. Thanks, bro. Um, as all the other stuff you're going to do. So you came in too hot. What did you do? Did you come in and say, hey, guys, I'm a Nazi. Isn't this hilarious? I'm a gay or evil. You decide. You decide. And they went, whoa, 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 guy. I was. You're the new kid. I ease was, into it. I was the new Ask guy. Ask them where they're from first. Who didn't ease into it. I was, I was, I went too hard in the paint, was trying to be too funny, roast people too early, where I came off as like just obnoxious noxious and too much where uh i remember sitting it was it felt like a movie i was sitting at like the nerdier table at lunch and i'm like why don't we sit over there they go we can't sit over there what are you talking about i'm like well i'm going <laughs> like i go over there and they were like you know kind of cold to me and i'm like and i went back i'm like yeah it's gonna take a little while <laughs> you went like, for it yeah i went for it yeah. like i always go for it um, so you were always that type of personality yeah you make yeah strong choices. i make strong choices but i literally i buried myself so hard in the first uh from september to december at the at that school i came in too hot and was too like bah, 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 did, 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 that i was like i can't get out of this i made a horrible first impression and i went back to the school that i was supposed to go to and all of luckily all those friends accepted me and, and i had a great rest of my high school how old were you at this time i would uh, it would have been 15 15 15 so y you were just in charge of making the decisions of when you were going to go to school like you just were calling the shots to your parents. You're like, I'm going to try this one out. Now it's time to try that one out. So luckily I have supportive parents. Also, they were having marital issues. Uh -huh. So it was one of those things where, you know, they're like, oh, okay, well, like I also, I'm, I'm such a, like a committed person. Yeah. When I say I need to stop doing something, they're like, oh. Okay, like I, I told him, I'm like, I hate this school. Were you getting bullied or anything? No, no you just, it wasn't bullied. You wanted to leave because you were bombing? I did. <laughs> <laughs> you did I mean, I can't. You just, people weren't laughing at you, so you decided I can't be Not educated. My audience. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get out of this demographic. <laughs> I'm trying to understand it. So you were just like, this is a bad crowd. Yeah. You're like, I, they don't get me. So you treat this I'm school. I'm too old for them. You treat this school like it was a corporate Christmas party. And you're like, this shit sucks. Get the car running, mom and dad. I'm going back to clubs. Yeah. I want to go back to the store. Yeah. Wow. So did you li leave mid-year? Uh, mid did did oh, you make one the friend there? I was going, you're leaving. You're going, yeah, man, this fuck. These people are lame. Uh, there was a they couple. They don't fucking get there me. There were a couple of people who I made that were good friends there that were like, they're like, oh man, like, like, come on, stick it out. I'm like, nope. I know, like, I'm, I know my crowd. I know myself. Yeah, I know my. I know crowd. my brand. This I know my, my brand. brand. This isn't. This <laughs> yeah. isn't for me, man. Uh, who's who would who would have crushed there? Who would have crushed there? Yeah. Oh, which at comic? that school? Yeah. Which like comic would have crushed at that? Yeah. School? If you're thinking about the vibe there, who would who would have been the perfect comic for that gig? Ooh. Since your whole life has been a fucking has been a, a tour. Jeremiah <laughs> Jeremiah Wackers is always his life. He just he's been on tour. He's like, hey guys, I got to go do school. And your mom's like, you're gonna, yeah, man, I'm gonna see how the crowd is. I'll let you I know. I think I think Delia would have crushed at the school. Okay, so you're saying it was all young girls. You went to an all young girl school. <laughs> no, I just, you said it, not me. You keep, you keep saying different comic names and then looking over at me like Jeremiah. How are you gonna respond? No, I think it was very much like um it, like a cool comedian guy would have killed at this school oh i was too like like weird does that make sense like it was a very like you were so, a fucking geek they were it was a wealthy school okay. i was not wealthy no i can uh, see that i was yeah. yeah i was like more weird and nerdy like with my humor and stuff like that i was never like one of the cool guys ever right. i was cool just like just off of making people laugh that was the only time i was but cool. if any of those you know fucking I mean? kids decided like they wanted to slap box you you would fucking, you got long arms, you got the reach advantage, oh, yeah. and you got balls. Yeah. Jeremiah's the guy has got balls. Yeah. Jeremiah's the guy you think won't smack you upside the fucking head, but you will. He also has a lot of repressed Christian rage, and those guys will bite you. They will fucking, you know. <laughs> That's some truth right there's there, There's some brother. truth, because you're trying. You have to walk around being good all the time, being good at trying to turn the other cheek, trying to see the good in people, until you just fucking snap and eat a prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what it makes it sound like. There's like the time it's going to turn at any moment. <laughs> so you went back to your geeky fucking school and became king of the dipshits. Yeah. What happens after that? 
Are you crushing? I'm crushing. You're fucking getting puss. The principal All used the girls to walk by me yeah. at the school because uh, I was like, I was one of, the, I was the, like the news anchor of Tiger TV, and uh, he, the principal would walk by me. He'd go, Jeremiah Watkins, the face and voice of Tiger TV, <laughs> <laughs> of Blue Valley High School. So you were always the entertainer. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. 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 you're a, you're a. You're a. I'm a theater kid at heart. You're a theater kid at heart. Yeah. Th this talent you have, because you're very talented. You're oh, one of those nice guys that like you're talented with your body, your voices, your choices. You're very comedically gifted. So that was always there. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, my, my my parents encouraged it from a young age because I used to uh, the first thing I used you were to not... mimic. I used to mimic a lot. Like right. I could pick up on voices and recreate them pretty quickly. Like after hearing it, like just one time, kind of thing. And with songs on the radio, I I can hear a song on the radio and know most of the words so pretty they quickly. Encouraged you. Yeah. You, so your parents were good. No, they were great. They were great. They were awesome. So where's the yeah. darkness? <laughs> what, what made you want to make people laugh? Because we're all painting over the pain. Yeah, of course. That's why we're painting over yeah. the pain. So what's what's the darkness in the Watkins household? Your parents encouraged you to mimic, but then they also <laughs> killed things. They also, there was uh, a cheating. No, I mean, so. I don't want to get in legal trouble here. <laughs> right, Make it right. up. Just make it make it up. I mean, what, the, the real thing is like, so they got divorced like around the time I was a teenager. They were having marital problems and stuff like that. They've had like, you know, we've had a lot of alcohol issues in my family. Ah, good old Northern European alcohol issues. Mm -hmm. You fucking snow monkeys can't hold your liquor. Nope. No, it's a problem. And you know, there's actually a, anatomical reason for that there's a biological reason really yes um there's a re the same reason why asians have a harder time with it uh native americans can't handle it because southern europeans there's less of an incidence of alcoholism in southern europe because southern europeans had been drinking alcohol for a lot lot longer than the germanic tribes so they built up the tolerance built and up the like tolerance yeah, yeah. and then you know you guys were these fucking tribes of wild you know animals up there and we were the civilized greeks and romans down there and then it flipped at some point you guys got your shit together and you went a little too far you went a little too far but um and then you got alcohol that's why russia sweden norway yeah. you ever go up there england these vomit all over the street these animals they can't hold the fucking beer can't do it yeah they need to smoke weed they need you, really the someone needs to interview i wish my family would have been more pro weed back in the day yeah. it would have solved a ton of issues so we got some out we got some good old northern european alcohol issues yeah 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 in the in the frontier land yeah yeah and you grew up specifically where in Kansas. Kansas is Kansas. weird. Landlocked. Yeah. You guys don't see water. Yeah, we have, we've got You're some the, lakes here and there. Yeah, with a like lot of mosquitoes. Missouri. Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes. There's chiggers out in the, uh, in the grass that'll bite you. What are those called? Chiggers. Hit that CH hard, baby. CH. CH. Chiggers. 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 Yeah, when you say that word, you got you to gotta really emphasize the CH. Uh -huh. Chiggers. Shy town Shy town No, that's the wrong direction. Right, 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 right. Chiggers. Chiggers. There's an insect called chiggers? Yeah, they, they bite you and they suck your blood. Have you ever heard of chiggers? Type in chiggers on them. <laughs> I'm scared what's going to show up. I know, chiggers. I can't believe this they're, bug has not been renamed. They're called berry bugs. I've literally never heard them called berry I mean, bugs. Jesus Christ, we renamed the fucking Cleveland Indians, but you're letting this bug still be called a chigger? <laughs> <laughs> See, they're called berry bugs, but dude, oh my you God. get bit and you literally, you're like your legs, you'll itch for days after you get bit by these things. And they live in the grass all over Kansas <sighs> and Missouri in the Midwest. This is a fucking, this is like, these are worse than a tick. This is like a nightmare. Yeah, because the ticks, the difference is a tick will lock in so you see it, right? right. The chigger goes These in. are so small that it's so hard to even see. They're so tiny that like you'll just, the next day after you've been playing in, in the lawn or in the grass or in the woods, you'll just be like, oh man. And they're like, oh man, these chiggers. And you, can, you can't see it. You can't see them. They've already left. They've already bit you and sucked your blood and left. Fucking. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's real bad there. Wow. I had no idea they were called berry bugs. Wow. <laughs> three. You gave that a three? I gave that a three. <laughs> three. Three. Dude. Oh, the mic sticks. 
Look at those fucking bites. That is nasty. That's disgusting. Dude, I'm telling you, dude, the, you get like welts. You get like welts on your leg and stuff like that. It's, Why it's doesn't gnarly. everyone leave Kansas? You know? Dude, if I was getting bit by chiggers, I would not raise my kids here. <laughs> I'm not comfortable with this conversation. <laughs> Continuing to call them chiggers. It's just way, it's just way too close. See? Evil yeah. or gay? Yeah. Chiggers? Chiggers? Or, or berry bugs. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is it? I you thought you were bug. going in another place and thank God you went that way. But you made the same point. <laughs> you made the same point. Yeah, yeah. Chiggers <laughs> or berry bugs. Berry bugs. Or you could go chiggers or... <laughs> 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 Berry bugs. God, I, dude, have you ever heard of chiggers? No, I've never heard of them. Do they give you like? Can you get like uh, disease, like Lyme disease? You, no, no, no. You don't get. You know, I, I never got sick from it. It's literally just like an annoyance. Mm, you know, it's, right. it's 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 more like an inconvenience. You're like, ah, oh, man, like These like you, you get bugs. if you're in high brush, like in the woods and stuff like that, you can get them all over, like little welts all over your legs and stuff like that. Okay, yeah. I I. I have a dangerous Google. Mm -hmm. Let's find out why they're called chiggers. Who named them chiggers is a okay. reason. Yeah. Chigger warning coming up. <laughs> <laughs> I've been chiggered this podcast. <laughs> oh, Yanni boy. made me chiggered this whole time. I love this neighborhood because when you play in the grass, there's no chiggers. Is a statement you could say in Kansas that would... Be totally fine and It'd understandable. Be factually fine and understandable. Fine and understandable. Right. Okay, the term chigger <laughs> <laughs> is somewhat misleading because in common language it means a biting mite of any kind. However, biologically, the term chigger is used to name the types of mites that bite and cause skin irritations in their larval stage. Okay, go down to where where did chiggers originate from? Many fly like insect in the West Indies in South America <laughs> from the West Indies, possibly the Caribbean, or from an influenced by words from African languages such as Wolof and Jigga sect. That was just an appropriate moment of silence. I don't yeah, know. We hit pause on the podcast. <laughs> I actually love that pause. Yeah. Um, a six-legged insect, usually red or orange mite. These things are a nightmare. They're mites. They're basically mites in the grass. Wow. Yeah, they're wood mites or grass mites. But why are they not up here? But yeah, intensely itchy and reddish welts. Yep. Wow. Yeah. But they're so tiny. Sometimes you can see them, but they're so tiny and red yeah. that, that they blend in like you have to really look for them. Yeah. Thank God they're red. <laughs> <You're so stupid. laughs> Thank God. Oh my God. I got nervous there for a second. I mean, I dude, this is this has been a fascinating podcast yeah. i had no idea that this was the thing yeah it's amazing i could live this long on this planet 87 it's years a it's a regional <laughs> and it's a never regional know thing. it's a regional thing dude do you ha do you have this have you talked about chick has other people that you've met not known about chiggers you know this is literally one of those conversations where have you ever had it before i haven't had a conversation with somebody who's not from the area you know right. what I mean? Right. From from where like I grew up because I don't talk about them anymore because I don't have to deal with them anymore. They're not in LA. I don't right. have to deal with chiggers anymore. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I moved. I moved away from right. the chiggers. Yeah. So there's no there's this this mite. I let's just call it a mite. Mites. These mites are not in LA. No. They're not in the Northeast. No. I think it's Midwest and South. Midwest and South. Yeah. Or where where you can find these yeah. chiggers. Uh, it's amazing that, the, you know, if they, I think it's because they're not known enough that people don't have a problem with this name. Oh, no, it's an, uh, yeah, the more we talk about it, the more I'm like, yeah, that's, it, it's odd. That, Let's um, look at this one. What did Indians do to, for chiggers? Go to that one. Yeah, what did Indians do for, Indians used herbs made from plants in their respective area to, to deal with chiggers. Chiggers seem to be sulfur. Garlic is also a favorite to discourage pesky insects. So, 
you rub yourself in garlic, mm-hmm. and so is bear grease. You're not grease. getting vampires. You're, you're not, not getting, getting yeah, chiggers. You're not getting chiggers. <laughs> Do chiggers stay in your bed? No, they generally leave. Chiggers can- <laughs> Chiggers come not live in your bed because these microscopic pests need a worm body to have their three to four meals. Comedy oh. is can be very fun. Comedy can be naughty. Uh-huh. It can be fun. It can be nice. It can be sugar. It can be spice. It can be spice. But the intention is always to make you laugh. Yeah. We're here to entertain you. Yeah. We're entertainers. Entertainers okay? at heart. And the only thing that could go wrong is we're at the wrong school. It's the wrong crowd, baby. Wrong crowd. Wrong audience. Now, when you, when you get back, were you like, my people, I'm back? There was a couple people that were like, huh, you're yeah. back. And you used to just crush at this school with your nerd humor. Yeah. And it, the nerds were eating it up. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> 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 we love to have you back, man. <laughs> no, uh, I, no, the thing, I think I appealed to, I was friends with everybody at, the school that I ended up at, like it didn't matter what what um, you know, if it was improv people, like actory types, if it was the jocks, if it was more nerdy people, I was generally friends with everybody. And at the other school, I just felt like an outcast. I was like, oh, this is just yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, when's the Jeremiah Watkins comedy special coming out? Are I'm you doing working, one? Yeah, I'm working on my next hour right now. I'm I'm, I'm locking in the net. I ha, basically I've got like an hour and a half to hour forty five material right now that I've been doing at the different clubs while I've been on tour, and I'm deciding what I want to lock for this next hour. So stand up on the spot's been the priority for now, um, stand up on the just spot. because uh, we've been releasing new episodes every like three weeks to four weeks uh, since we just have been allowed to start shooting at the store, and the next one comes out on um, on Monday, uh, May twenty third. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I've been releasing those, as you know, like, uh, you've seen a little bit of, of the, the, those are sh- like, it's a series of like mini specials. So like, it takes a lot of production to make those happen. So been focusing on those, but I'm, uh, yeah, I've been touring with an hour that I really like right now that I'm excited to put out as like my next special. Yeah. Stand up on the spot is on your YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash Jeremiah Watkins. Also, of course, Scissor Bros. Scissor Bros. YouTube.com slash Scissor Bros. Jeremiah Wonders. Yeah. Those are his two podcasts. That's his show. Mm-hmm. Stand up on the spot. You, my friend, are fun. Dude, I, I, this I, was I I'm not. F- this I'm is not one of you? our classics right here. Oh, no. I already oh, yeah. know that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is maybe our best step. This is an instant classic. I know before it even goes out. This was this episode's what they call a 10 out of 10. Oh, yeah, baby. This was fun. Jeremiah Watkins. I is- wasn't lying. When I texted you, I said, you're one of the first people I hit up as soon as I got my plane tickets locked in for New York because I was like, I have to pod with Yanni when I come out. It's, this was a ride, baby. This is right. Go check out my episodes on Jeremiah Wonders. So fun. We have so fun. fun. We do characters. It's amazing. Jeremiah Watkins, you're so talented. You're so funny. You just came in here and gave us a fucking classic long day. Go follow if you don't already. A lot of you probably already do. And if you don't, you need to. And check out Stand Up on the Spot. Check out his two podcasts. Go to his YouTube page. Follow the guy. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, small business shout out to our people. We support them. They support us. Freaking cold spring water right here. Mountain spring water in an aluminum can. It stays freaking cold. No plastic, which is really bad for you, as you know. That's why you got to start ordering cases of freaking cold to your house, to your studio, to your office, whatever. Go to freakingcoldspringwater.com right now. It is the water company, baby, of long days. So go now. Okie dokie. You know the soda we drink here. Brooklyn Cannery. Brooklyncannery.com. All you have to do is mention Giannis Pappas. All one word in the promo code. Promo code Giannis Pappas. All one word for 15% off your next order of Brooklyn Cannery. Go get this soda, prebiotic, all natural. They sweeten it with like monk fruit and all that stuff. There's no artificial shit in it. The calories are super low and they're delicious. 
Try the key lime jalapeno. Try the cola amaretto. Try the root beer. Those are my favorites. There's also the ginger beer is delicious. It's magical because uh, I love a ginger beer once in a while. I just I have a hankering for it. Brooklyncannery.com. So excited about this small business. You guys need to order right now and enjoy. Of course, if you want to get LASIK in the New York City area, you go to OCNYI.com. See Nicola Ragusa, uh, 646-543-9474, and you will get a discount by mentioning Long Days or Giannis Pappas. 10% off your LASIK. Longshorecoffee.com, 15% off at checkout. With the promo code FUMES, guys, the coffee is incredible. Stephen Miller is the owner of Longshore Coffee up there in Providence, Rhode Island. He's a teacher. He's a history teacher and an entrepreneur who started this company. Um, He left to do this full time. It's all I drink. So it's what I drink. And I'm not lying to you. So and it's delicious. So they offer premium blends and single origin coffees. And they ship nationwide. So go to nationwide. Longshorecoffee.com, 15% off uh, for the Fediverse with the promo code FUMES. Nate Linder. NateLinder.com, the social media managing guru. Okay. Uh, What's he doing now? What's Nate doing? You want to target individuals at, at the address level looking to reach an audience from an industry conference from three months ago want to retarget website vis- visitors to increase sales want to hit up your target audience on every single device that they own nate is your guy natelinder.com he's also helping out another one of our small business sponsors who you'll hear about in a minute but hit nate linder up so you can build your brand Chris Manetti, Manetti Financial Services in the South Jersey, Philly area. You know the phone number. You know what it is. All you have to do is go to 215-750-3730. You don't go to it. You call it, and he picks up, and he goes, yeah, can I help you? And you go, I got to check the cash. And he goes, come by the store. For the free dot US, all things music, all things Hawaii, guys, basically. Uh, it's an organization de- dedicated to providing artists from Hawaii a place to develop their craft. They host free shows, post free music by local artists. Check out their website. That's where it starts, forthefree.us. If you're an artist in Hawaii and want to get on stage, contact their website. If you want to find out about um, artists in Hawaii who are making music, hit them up. And then, of course, we got the new guy, 305 PLP Media Services. Hit them up. They do anything, cuz. Anything video. Creative services, production, post-production, professional uh, videography, um, corporate educational videos, traditional media marketing material. Like if you're, you want to do a por- amateur porn for swingers, uh, hot wives and gangbangs, Miami, that's big business. So email them at, I'm not reading no weddings, because you should do weddings. <laughs> Why are you not? Why are you curtailing what your potential business would be? Nate Linder, help these fucking guys out. Email them at info at 305plp.com, okay? Or call them at 786-548-2274 or CA money sign H cash. Jared, ExclusiveAutoShipping.com. You're moving your car. If you're moving anywhere and you need to move your car, you hit up ExclusiveAutoShipping.com and get your free quote right now. It's been a long time. 